After a number of non-destructive measurements, Marco harvests a couple of leaves to assess leaf mass area, or LMA for short. This is an important variable, as it indicates how much biomass the plant invests in the development of leaf area. Now you can see Stephanie in the lab measuring the leaf area with a special instrument, the portable area meter. As you can see, the leaf that Marco sampled has an area of 29.01 centimeters squared. For assessing the mass, Stephanie carefully records the exact weight of a labeled glass sampling container on a specially prepared protocol sheet. Then, she cuts up the leaf whose area she measured previously and places the cuttings in the container, and records the weight of the glass container now containing the sample, exactly 37.1884 grams. The sample goes on a tray with several more samples and they all go into the oven to be dried at approximately 100 degrees Celsius. After drying, leaf mass area can be calculated from the dry weight and leaf area. In addition, the dry samples are ground into fine powder using a laboratory mill. This powder is then analyzed for percentage carbon and nitrogen content by a combustion in a special analyzer. Meanwhile, Benedict weighs all plant biomass samples. Hang on, including the plastic bag? The plastic bag preserves the inner moisture of the sample so that evaporative losses which may occur during the transport from the field to the lab do not bias the measurement. The plastic bag contains the entire above ground biomass of a 50 by 50 centimeter wheat field area. Ah, now he also records the weight of an empty sampling container and unpacks the biomass sample from its bag. Next, he carefully disassembles the plants. The ears go into one sampling container, while the leaves and stems go into separate ones. Just as Stephanie did before, Benedict carefully cuts up the plant material until all parts are sorted in their corresponding containers, and he records their weights. Finally, his samples join Stephanie's in the oven to be dried. Okay, dinner is ready. Just kidding. After around 24 hours at 105 degrees Celsius and constant air supply, the samples have reached a state where their weight remains constant. The samples must be put into an exicator device while cooling down to avoid the condensation of air humidity before they can be put on the scale again. Finally, Benedict records the dry weight. From the difference between fresh and dry weight, plant water content can be calculated. And because Benedict separated the plants into ears, leaves, and stems, we now know the average water content of the individual plant constituents.